Welcome back. So, we will discuss um, linear response theory and uh, in particular derivation of Kubo formula uh, in the context of uh, condensed matter physics. So, uh, you can take the title as uh, linear response theory and uh, derivation of Kubo formula. However, in general uh, the linear response theory goes beyond just the Kubo formula and it is uh, applicable to various branches of uh, physics. So, what do we mean by linear response? Uh, so, in presence of an external field uh, when the, the system responds to a given external field and when the external field is small in magnitude, then uh, there is a linear response that uh, the system um, demonstrate or exhibits and this is called as linear response theory such that uh, say the current density is given as this is called as the Ohm's law where j the current density is written as sigma e, where sigma is the conductivity, j is the current density and e is the applied electric field. And this is valid for uh, small electric fields, small values of the electric fields. And um, if uh, say uh, another example is that the polarizability uh, is uh, or rather the polarization can be written as uh, uh, polarizability and uh, the electric field in a dielectric material. And uh, so, these are examples of linear response that we are familiar with. Now, if the applied field is large, then we actually may need to go to uh, higher orders of the electric field which are like E square and E cube and so on, in which case we deviate from linear response theory and there are examples of such nonlinear materials. Uh, which have uh, their own you know domain of interest uh, where people study nonlinear uh, responses of the system and there are nonlinear coefficients which are often of interest. We will not go into that, but however, we will derive a formula for the linear response theory and uh, by doing so, we will make grounds for arriving uh, at the Kubo formula which is uh, which establishes a uh, uh, connection between the current density and the electric field which is what is written here uh, is also a, a alternately uh, alternatingly it is uh, um, the statement of Ohm's law and this is what we are familiar with. So, let us go into uh, this um, linear response theory. So, uh, any uh, consider an arbitrary observable A. And uh, in absence of any field, any external field, the thermal average of this observable is written as A and this 0 in the subscript signify that there is no field. Uh, this is equal to 1 over z 0 and uh, this is uh, phi 0 are the non interacting eigenstates or rather the eigenstates in the absence of any external field. Uh, this is the Boltzmann weighting and this is the value of uh, the expectation value of a um, within the unperturbed states. So, uh, z 0 uh, is a partition function E 0 energy and phi 0 are unperturbed eigenstates. And assumably we know the 
problem of h 0 phi 0 equal to e 0 phi 0. So, that is a starting point that uh, we can solve the non interacting or rather the unperturbed Hamiltonian that is without an external field exactly and uh, phi zeros are the eigenstates z 0 is the partition function which is uh, the exponential minus beta h, uh, h being the Hamiltonian of the uh, and summed over all the states and so on and this is the thermal average of this quantity. Now, if we apply an external field then uh, the same expectation. Uh, so, in presence of an external field So, this uh, the same observable uh, the thermal average of that is written as 1 over z now is the partition function for the system which is perturb perturbed by the external field and uh, this is again having the same form excepting that all those zeros are now replaced by uh, just the quantities such as z 0 is now replaced by z and phi 0 is replaced by phi and these exponential minus beta e no longer uh, beta e 0 where e 0 was the energy of the unperturbed uh, state and this is a phi a phi. So, this in the linear response regime when the external field is not too large this we should be able to write it as uh, a 0 plus a delta a. Okay. And it is important to find this delta a. So, the our task at hand is to find this delta a and uh, which appears because of the field. So, this uh, appears because of the external field. So, now let us write down the Hamiltonian in presence of the field that is the total Hamiltonian including the unperturbed term plus the term that is arising out of the perturbation. So, that Hamiltonian is written as h uh, of t this is equal to h 0. Now, h 0 can in principle include interaction terms and there is no embargo on that. So, h 0 is the Hamiltonian without an external field which could have an electron electron interaction, electron lattice interaction, a single particle energies and so on, but is independent of time. And the term that is the term that depends on uh, the external field is written as this where the the perturbation or the external field is switched on at t 0 and before that it was non existent. So, for t less than t 0 we have h of t equal to h 0 and uh, at after t greater than uh, or after t uh, equal to t 0 or rather t greater than t 0 we have this Hamiltonian which is h of t equal to h 0 plus h prime theta t minus t 0, where theta t minus t 0 is the theta function which you all know that a theta t minus t 0 equal to 1 for t greater than t 0 equal to 0 otherwise. Okay. So, uh, this h satisfies uh, this equation the Schrodinger equation which is i uh, del del t of y t and of course, we have taken h cross equal to 1. Okay. So, the problem is clear that we are talking about the thermal average of an observable which is given by a 
and this observable can be written in the linear response regime as a 0 plus delta a and we need to find delta a and the Hamiltonian has a uh, part which is independent of the external field which is h 0 and the part that depends upon uh, the external perturbation or rather the external field is h prime t. And the whole Hamiltonian or rather the full Hamiltonian is h of t which satisfies the Schrodinger equation h t phi t equal to i del del t of phi t. Now, in the interaction picture the uh, perturbed states are so phi of t it's equal to exponential minus i h not t and a phi 0 uh, where again we have taken h equal to cap, uh, h cross equal to 1 uh, so, this is equal to nothing but minus i h naught t uh, u t of u t t 0 and a phi naught at t uh, equal to t 0. So, where uh, u of t t 0 is the same definition that we have seen earlier, it is a t 0 to t and a d t prime h t prime and plus other terms if we uh, do not decide to stop at linear in the uh, perturbation term which is uh, equal to here h prime. So, h prime includes the perturbation term or the external field term. So, if we substitute uh, this phi t and this u t into this equation that we have uh, we have written down here. So, let us write this down as uh, equation uh, 1, uh, the uh, Hamiltonian is say equation 2 and then we will talk about this as equation 3 and this as equation 4. If we put them down uh, and then we can write down uh, a of t which is equal to uh, a of 0 minus i a uh, t 0 to t a uh, d t prime and sum over phi 0 and there is a phi 0 uh, a of t uh, h prime t prime um, phi 0 and exponential minus beta e 0 over z 0. So, this is the term that is the first term is the term that is uh, without any external field and we have kept. So, what we did is that putting uh, 3 and 4 in 1 and we have retained linear terms uh, in h prime. I have skipped a step which you should fill it in uh, that uh, there is a commutator bracket of a t and h prime t prime which are coming because of this 1 minus this which will be there on both sides because there is a uh, phi t uh, and a phi. So, there is a phi uh, there and a phi there. So, each one will uh, involve a u t t 0 and then you will write it and then uh, take the uh, so keep terms up to linear in h prime and then you will see that the commutator bracket comes out. So, just one step that has been skipped which you should fill up. So, in a shorthand notation so a t equal to a 0 minus i t 0 t prime sorry t uh, it is not t prime there is no 
So, this t prime is a dummy variable uh, here as well. I mean, the t prime is a dummy variable in this step, which is a step just below the equation 4, um, and this is equal to uh, we can skip those phi zeros, understandable that it is the uh, ground state or the unperturbed expectation values of this commutator a t and h prime t prime. Okay. So, this is the term that we wanted to find and this is uh, the term that we get in linear response theory. Okay. So, this comes out as a commutator between the observable and the time dependent part of the Hamiltonian which is due to the external field. So, this is essentially the linear response theory. Let us now write a particular form for h prime. So, consider h prime of t equal to uh, some f r t and a b r and a d r. So, that is a volume integral and this is a, a coefficient and this is the external field. Um, at this moment, it is nothing but uh, uh, just the uh, you know I mean uh, sort of this is actually a vector. So, this is a dot product of that. So, uh, this b is not to be uh, confused with magnetic field b is any field that you may want to consider. So, now our delta a r t this is equal to minus i d r prime and a d t from 0 to t and I we have uh, a r t uh, b r r prime t prime. I mean let us write it without this just to. So, they look same and there is a f r prime uh, t prime and of course, we will have to write down uh, the uh, exponential uh, minus beta uh, z uh, z uh, beta e 0 divided by z 0 e 0 divided by z 0. So, that is the thing that we want to write. So, now dropping this term for the moment. Uh, we will simply write it as d r prime uh, and a minus infinity to plus infinity and a d t prime there is a prime here and a theta t minus t prime and this is a r t uh, b r prime uh, t prime and this and then you have a f r prime t prime. And so, this is this integral is taken from minus infinity to plus infinity by introducing the theta function that we see here. Now, this can further be written as d r prime uh, d t prime with appropriate uh, limits of the integral. This is equal to uh, chi r t r prime t prime and uh, f of r prime and t prime, where chi of r r prime t uh, t prime, this is t. t t prime, this is equal to minus i theta t minus t prime and there is a a r t commuted with b r prime t prime and that is the form for this coefficient that we have written as chi. So, this equation let us call it 
give it a number, let us call it as equation 5. Equation 5 is known as the Kubo formula. Okay. And uh, this formula is applicable to a variety of situations say a uh, density uh, response function function and the chi is the uh, dielectric constant. So, we will so this A is the uh, density response function and the chi is the dielectric constant which is the the coefficient that appears in our discussion. Then we have current response and conductivity which is the, uh, the coefficient. And uh, then of course, we have others such as magnetic response and susceptibility and so on. Okay. So, uh, for our case, we shall consider uh, this one. and we will compute the Kubo formula corresponding to the current response and conductivity. So, let us uh, take uh, an external electric field to have the form. E R T which is uh, derivable from a scalar potential phi and a vector potential A. Uh, for the static case we have this uh, minus grad phi only and for the uh, time dependent case we will have to include a del A del T. However, uh, let us drop the first term uh, by taking that you know by uh, uh, the potential since it is a a quantity which can be set to 0 that uh, you can set uh, the potential to be 0 at a point that you uh, want uh, and measure the potential from there. So, uh, and so basically this has a problem that this um, uh, goes all the way up to infinity. So, it is unbounded. So, let us drop this for the for now and let us write E equal to simply equal to a minus a del A del T and uh, the Hamiltonian is written as. So, in presence of the field the Hamiltonian is written as a uh, dr this is we are writing it in continuum notation which are like psi of r and there is a p plus e a divided square over 2 m and a psi of r. So, that is the Hamiltonian. This Hamiltonian can be expanded by opening up the square which will give us two th uh, th three terms rather a p square over 2 m and uh, e square a square over 2 m and there is a p dot a and a, a dot p term not necessarily that p will com uh, commute with a. So, we will keep both these terms. Uh, however, you see the p square by 2 m the first term is actually a part of h 0. So, this can be written as h 0 and plus uh, e over uh, 2 m uh, and uh, we have a d r and there is a psi dagger uh, p dot a psi plus a psi dagger a dot p psi and uh, 
there is a plus e square over 2 m a uh, d r uh, a square psi dagger psi and so this can be written as uh, h 0 plus a uh, delta h just the way we have segregated the unperturbed part of the Hamiltonian which is without the field and the delta h coming from uh, the term which includes a vector potential which comes because of the external field A or other external field E. So, what is the form of, uh, so H 0 is of course, our nothing but a d r and a psi r and a p square over 2 m psi of r and delta H is nothing but uh, d r psi dagger and we have a p dot a plus a, a dot p psi and plus a term which is d r a square psi dagger psi. Since p is equal to minus i h cross del, we can use the definition of j 1 by 2 m i and a psi dagger del psi minus a del psi dagger psi and plus a e by m a psi a psi dagger psi. So, this is called as the paramagnetic current uh, density and this is known as the diamagnetic current density. So, this we will represent by a j p, p for paramagnetic and this will represent by a j d. So, the perturbation term can be written as So, delta H which is the perturbation term which is equal to a d r a j dot a where j is the current density and a is the vector potential and let us now write down the state. So, a many body state n n uh, can be written as n equal to n 0 plus uh, n 1 and uh, so n 1 n 0 is of course, the unperturbed state uh, which is same as phi 0 uh, if you want and n 1 includes the correction up to first order. Okay. So, if that is the case my uh, n j n. So, so, this j now consists of a paramagnetic term which is coming from uh, the current without a field and uh, the diamagnetic term is because of the field that is because of the vector potential A. And so, this is equal to uh, n 0 uh, j p n 0 plus uh, n 0 j d n 0 plus uh, n 1 j p n n 1 and plus uh, n 1. So, now uh, this term cannot be included because we have uh, t 
taken the corrections up to the first order. So, n 1 contains an order of a and j d will also contain an order of a. So, those terms will be of the second order and you have to neglect those term in a linear response theory. Thus, n j n ideally should have four terms coming from j p and j d. However, because the n 1 is the correction up to first order in the external field and j d is also includes a term uh, which is linear in the external field, uh, we will have to drop that term. So, any term that is uh, of the order of a square has to be dropped. Now, you look at the first term. in this above. So, this can be said to be equal to 0 for the reason. So, at equilibrium there is no current. So, this is equal to 0 So, the first term goes to 0 and uh, then um, so the thermal average of this the second term so this is the second term which is because of the field is nothing but e by m a r t and a rho r and this rho r is coming from psi dagger psi and we have taken the thermal average. So, uh, now to establish a contact with our earlier notations that we have used, let us write So, we have B of R which is equal to a paramagnetic J P of R a F of R T which is equal to E A R T and the A vector which is the left hand side of the linear response equation which is equal to a J P alpha r. Okay. So, the current uh, the expectation value of the current or the thermal average of the current uh, is written as rather the thermal average is written as this j p alpha r t this is equal to e a d r prime and a chi a p alpha beta r t r prime t prime a beta r prime t prime. We are almost there with the Kubo formula excepting that this a has to be now converted into e. So, now where our chi uh, p alpha beta r r prime t t prime it is equal to minus i theta t minus t prime and uh, j p alpha r t j p beta r prime t prime and this. So, this is your chi the paramagnetic part of the response and uh, including the diamagnetic term So, chi p alpha beta r r prime t t prime is written as delta alpha beta delta r minus r prime delta t minus t prime and rho r t by m plus this chi. So, this is the 
not not the paramagnetic, but this uh, total chi. So, this is equal to p alpha beta and this is coming from the diamagnetic term. So, this is the diamagnetic contribution to the response. and this is the paramagnetic. So, since H 0 is time independent, this chi paramagnetic susceptibility it uh, does not depend upon two variables t and t prime the two, the two time variables rather it depends on t minus t prime. So, that we can write uh, and in fact, the whole susceptibility basically because of this uh, factors. So, chi alpha beta uh, r r prime uh, t t prime t t prime it is equal to chi alpha beta r r prime t minus t prime and this is. So, now Fourier transform of this uh, j alpha r omega it is equal to E d r prime chi alpha beta r r prime omega and there is a a beta r prime omega. So, that is the contribution due to the external field. Uh, now, the vector potential a is related to the uh, electric field as follows your E omega it is equal to i omega a omega. So, the current density is actually written as uh, so the current density j the electronic current density is written as minus E j uh, this is the j e is the electronic current density and this j is the one that we have derived just in the last slides. So, our j e alpha r omega it is equal to a d r prime a sigma p alpha beta r r prime omega uh, e beta uh, so, this is not required, this p is not required. So, it is equal to r prime omega. So, the conductivity tensor is written as this is called as the conductivity tensor. So, this conductivity tensor is defined as uh, sigma alpha beta r r prime omega it is equal to i e square by omega chi alpha beta r r prime omega. So, in uh, general this conductivity tensor is a non local quantity that is the contribution at a given point r depends on the neighboring points r prime and that is why you have to sum over all the neighboring points in order to get the electronic current density. So, also for a homogeneous system for an isotropic system or isotropic or homogeneous ok that is fine that is the they mean the same. Sigma alpha beta r r prime omega that is equal to sigma alpha beta r minus r prime omega. So, the system is translationally invariant. So, uh, the quantity that is here the conductivity tensor does not depend upon two variables r and r prime rather it depends on uh, single variable which is r minus r prime 
and uh, again a Fourier transform into the momentum space space L's uh, J E alpha Q omega it is equal to sigma alpha beta Q omega and E beta Q omega. So, this is our Kubo formula for the current response. So, the current response depends in the linear regime that is for small values of the electric field is linearly related to the current density or the thermal average of the current density and the coefficient is known as the uh, sigma uh, which is the conductivity tensor. Uh, remember it depends upon uh, both momentum and uh, frequency and uh, let us see some of its properties. So, the conductivity tensor actually I e square over omega delta alpha beta rho q omega by m and plus a chi p alpha beta q omega. So, this is the diamagnetic contribution and this is the paramagnetic contribution where uh, we can uh, write down this. Uh, so, chi uh, p alpha beta q omega it is equal to a minus i a d t a prime a a theta t minus t prime exponential i omega my uh, omega omega t minus t prime and then the commutator. So, it is j alpha q t and a j beta q prime my sorry minus q and a t prime and this and so on. So, that is the uh, paramagnetic part and uh, so it is important to note that the diamagnetic part actually rather it is uh, it vanishes for or rather it uh, blows up. So, what happens in the static limit that is uh, let us ask this question that as omega goes to 0 what happens uh, to these two terms. So, it seems that as omega goes to 0 the diamagnetic part um, actually blows up, but that blowing up is compensated by uh, a part of this paramagnetic susceptibility and giving you a static DC conductivity or DC conductivity static conductivity. So, static case. omega going to 0. So, the diamagnetic part blows up diverges for usual conductor conductors this divergence is cancelled by a part of the paramagnetic term term uh, thereby yielding the DC conductivity finite 
Interestingly, in a superconductor, which is a perfect diamagnet, uh, one gets the diamagnetic contribution dominates and the paramagnetic contribution vanishes. And what one gets is the following. the paramagnetic contribution becomes negligibly small or it becomes 0 and uh, the, the DC and the conductivity, the conductivity not DC, but the conductivity is uh, is purely imaginary so sigma alpha beta uh, for or we'll writing it upstairs we'll continue doing that and for a superconductor it's a q omega and it's i e square over omega and a delta alpha beta rho q omega and divided by m and this is a purely imaginary uh, thing and imaginary conductivity implies conductivity implies an inductive behavior. which you know from um, electric uh, study of electricity uh, or rather these circuits um, LR circuits and LCR circuits etcetera. So, you have a um, the impedance which is a op or rather the inverse of the impedance which is the conductance is uh, a purely imaginary quantity and uh, so this says it is a no, no dissipation of energy. So, this implies that there is no dissipation of energy uh, because of the flow of current and we know that these are called as the super current and uh, their persistent currents which would go uh, for uh, you know many years uh, without any uh, significant loss and, uh, and this arises because the paramagnetic part goes to 0 and only the diamagnetic contribution that is uh, uh, that is uh, that remains. In diamagnets as we told earlier that the diamagnetic susceptibility or the diamagnetic response is far far lower than that of uh, a superconductor. A superconductor has a diamagnetic susceptibility of uh, minus 1 which means it exactly cancels out the, uh, the external field the magnetization is just opposite to the field external field. And uh, whereas, in normal uh, metals uh, or uh, in the, the so called diamagnets uh, it is of the order of 10 to the power minus 5. So, uh, there is uh, it does not lead to uh, dissipation less energy and uh, like a superconductor. So, to summarize we have looked at the Kubo formula within a linear response theory. The Kubo formula talks about the current and its relationship to the applied field and the proportionality or the coefficient that comes out is called as the conductivity tensor and the conductivity is a momentum and frequency dependent quantity and uh, we have of course, uh, the special interest is to talk about DC conductivity which is uh, uh, at the omega equal to 0 limit and this is what happens at a finite omega sigma will be a proportional to or rather will depend on q and omega this is what we get from linear response theory where the, uh, the response of the system to uh, perturbation is linear to that of the external field.